Pastor Brad said, I believe it's a word in season. Uh, either I, I, it's for two people, two groups of people. Uh, those that have ever been in a storm or in a storm right now are those that think they're going to be in a storm. How many know that's all of us? How many are in a storm in life right now? Maybe physically, financially, uh, family-wise. I, I, I want you to raise your hand. I want you to keep it up. Keep it up high. Now look around. This is the body of Christ, and, and in the body of Christ, a lot of us face storms right now. You have a whole lot of brothers and sisters in the Lord that are in a storm right now. Uh, and so in a storm, what we're going to talk about is a great topic. How many think that you're, you might encounter a storm someday? Let me see your hands. That's a, just get them on up. Whether you like it or not, you're going to face storms, so... That's the two groups of people today. I've, I thought very, and I was very deliberate with our title today. The title is this, Storm Sheltered. Now notice, I didn't say storm shelter. What, what's the difference in shelter and sheltered? Storm shelter is when we run into it, when we're in a storm, we run into the shelter. To be storm sheltered means that I'm in a place that I'm sheltered no matter when the storm comes. And I want us to get to a place, we in the body of Christ have got to get to a place that we're not just running to God when we have a storm, but we stay in a place where we're constantly sheltered from the storm. Amen. So today we're going to talk about that. And as Pastor Brad said, I'm sorry, that's probably my fault. I didn't get the notes to him quick enough uh, to get you that. But if you got pen and paper or on your phone, please get those out. Uh, our pastor always says this, uh, note takers are history makers. So are you a note taker? You might say, well, why do I need to take notes? Because you never know, you might have to preach this sermon tomorrow at work. Ephesians 4.12 says you come to church to be equipped to go do the work of the ministry. God may be giving you this word for yourself, but he also is not just about you. You may have to preach this to someone this week. So take notes, all right? So let's begin in the Bible. Let's go to Psalms 91. How many of you know that's a great place to start? Come on, are you out there? Psalms 91, verse 1 says, He who dwells, now notice what, that, what does that word dwells mean? lives in, stays in, abides in, not just visits. So back to our title, it's not just running to the shelter, but staying sheltered. He who dwells in the secret place. If you were reading out of the NIV, that secret place that we have in the New King James is actually called shelter. He who dwells in the shelter or dwells and abides in the shelter, that secret place of the Most High, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, and I want you to underline that phrase in your Bible, I will say of the Lord, because David always had something to say about the situations he's in. We need to have something to say when we face trials, when we face a storm. Come on, how many of you know you got to have a word to say? Said, David said, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge. Come on, say my refuge and my fortress. Those are places of refuge. Fortress is a place of safety. In the middle of a storm, there's a place that you can go where it can't touch you. And come on, say, it's under his arms. Amen. He says, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge, my fortress, my God, in him I will trust. Surely he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid. Come on, say no fear. no fear. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor by the arrow that flies by day, nor pestilence that walks in darkness, nor destruction that lays waste at noonday. How many know we're facing this right now in our society today? Pestilence and plagues, we've got those right now. Pandemics, it, all of those are the same words. We've got that. We're facing that right now. How you respond to those situations makes a difference. What you say in those situations makes a difference. If all you're talking about is doom and gloom and how we're going to perish in that, you're going to have problems in life. But David said, I got something else to say about that. He is my shelter. He is my refuge. He is my fortress. My God. And him I'll trust. 
I'm not trusting in the government, and I'm not getting political, but I'm not trusting in the government. I'm trusting in my God. He was not elected. He can't be voted out. He is our refuge. He is our fortress. He's who we look to. You know what? The world's watching you. I didn't say this in the first service, but I felt it to say now. The world's watching you. You're the only Bible some people are reading. They're watching when you face a storm. They're watching how you handle it. Because you tell them you're a Christian. And, and I tell my, my Bible school class this a lot. I, I'm tired of people telling me you're a Christian. I want to see that you're a Christian. I don't want to hear blah, 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 blah. I want to see it. And they're watching you. And, and, and they're wanting to know how you respond. And we're going to learn to respond the right way. Come on, say amen to that. Verse 7 again, a thousand may fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand. Oh, come on, get ready to shout. But it shall not come near you. Amen. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord, who is your refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place. Come on, say storm sheltered. It's where we live, it's not what we visit. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent, and you shall trample them underfoot. Because he has set his love upon me. Now God starts to talk. Because he has set his love upon me. Therefore, I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call on me and I will answer. And I will be with him in trouble. And I will deliver him and honor him. Come on, shout amen to that. God's given us a promise. And you know what? A lot of us, you may have this printed on your walls at your house. But a lot of us, we know this verse. But you got to understand what it's really saying. And you got to make sure you're applying this to your life. This is where we live. This is how we do it. I'm going to abide in that place. I'm not going to let fear. I'm not going to let worry. I'm not going to let any bad report take me out of a place of peace and, and, and in comfort. I'm storm sheltered. Amen. amen. I have to amen myself every once in a while. Because, guys, this is the truth. And a lot of us, when we got saved, we're like, okay, cool. Now we're, we're, we're on easy street. <laughs> and all the people that laughed have been saved for a while. <laughs> because it doesn't take you out of the crosshairs. He's still going to come. Storms are still going to come. In fact, point number one, if you're taking notes, is this. Storms are going to come. And you say, well, pastor, I don't want that. Well, it's going to happen. But it doesn't matter that it happens. It matters where you're at when it happens. Because when you're in a place of storm sheltered, the storms can blow all they want. You're in a place where they will not affect you. It's time for us in the body of Christ to get to a place a maturity in the word that when storms come and they're going to come, they don't move me. They don't affect me. I'm not moved by them because storms are going to come. But I got a good word for you. John chapter 16, verse 33 says, these things I've spoken to you, that in me, come on, say in me. That's in Jesus. He says, in me, you may have peace. In the world, you will have tribulation. So in other words, Jesus himself said, hey, in this world, you're going to face problems. You're going to face tests. You're going to face tribulation. But he goes, I'm going to give you my peace. In fact, uh, I just, just stay right where you're at. I, I noted this one. I didn't get it on the slides. But John 14, 27 says, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. These are the words of Jesus again. He says, not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. In other words, you stay in a place of storm sheltered where when they come, you're not afraid, you're not anxious, because why? We're stepping into his peace. Now, I love that verse. It says, I'm giving you my peace. It's not a peace you're trying to find in yourself. He says, I'm giving you my peace. 
And then he says, not as the world gives. You know what the world says peace is? A nice hammock with lemonade beside a lake in the Colorado Mountains. Can I hear an amen for that? Man, that's just peace. No, that's what the world calls peace. You can be in the middle of a hurricane and be in perfect peace. It's not the situation or the circumstances. We have his peace that no matter what our circumstances are, we're in a place of peace. I've asked my wife to come up and just sing a song over you. And I don't want you to try to sing with her. I want you to just receive this as she sings over you. Because he said, I'm giving you my peace. Debbie. Peace, peace, wonderful peace. Coming down from the Father above, sweep over my spirit forever, I pray, in fathomless Billows of love. Sing it again. There's some of you that you're in a storm. I want you to receive this as a prayer sung over you. Peace, peace, wonderful peace coming down from the Father above. Sweep over. Spirit forever, I pray in fathomless billows of love. Amen. Amen. Thank you, baby. I didn't tell her she was going to do that today. That before the, right before I stepped up at the first service, I said, hey, if I uh, tell you you're going to sing, grab that mic and come on up. So uh, some of you are saying, hey, why don't you just be quiet? Let's let her sing the rest of it. I'm in for that myself. But he says, I'm giving you my peace. Some of you have been looking for peace, but you've been looking at it from all the wrong places. It's his peace that you need. In his peace, it doesn't matter what's happening outside the shelter. You're in a perfect place of peace. So how do we do that? A lot of times as I, I preach, a lot of times I'm telling you a lot what to do, but I don't sometimes tell you how to do it. So today we're going to get really practical and tell you how to do some. And this first one is a great step. Turn in your Bibles to Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7 verse 24. This is a parable that Jesus was teaching, and we've all, how many grew up in Sunday school? This is one of those, this is the wise and foolish builder. How many remember that song? The wise man built his house upon the rock. Some of you are saying, let her sing. (laughs) The wise man built his house upon, come on, sing it. The wise man built his house upon the rock, and the rains came tumbling down. All right, so we remember that song, and a lot of times I heard that song, but I really didn't understand fully what it was talking about. Let's pick it up. The words of Jesus, he says, therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rains descended, and the floods came up, and the winds blew, and beat on that house, but it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. Now, what's the rock? Jesus. That's a great answer, and it technically is exactly what we're talking about, but you've got to look at this in context. That's not really what he was talking about. He says this. He says, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to this wise man that builds his house on the rock. Now look at the next verses. Verse 26. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them, I will liken him to a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat on that house, and it fell, and great was its fall. Now, I used to think this was talking about the righteous and the unrighteous, the godly and the ungodly. But that's not what he's talking about at all. 
because he says the wise man is the one that hears these sayings and does them. But this one says, but everyone who hears these sayings of mine, now the world isn't hearing his sayings. They're not in church. They're not reading the Bible. They're not hearing his sayings. So he's talking about people in the church that are hearing these sayings, but they do not do them. And the difference, because the storm comes upon both of them. The same storm hits both of them, but one's not phased and the other one has great loss. The one that's not phased is hearing the word and putting it into practice. The other ones are still hearing the word, but they're not doing anything with it. And he said, it's like a foolish person building their house on a sand. And you know what? This is a major thing because we can come to church a lot and get really excited about the word. And I learned a lesson really early as a preacher. I never get up and say, okay, now what did we talk about last week? Because what you hear is crickets in the room. Well, it was really good. Well, thanks, but what was it? Well, I, you know, a lot of times we don't remember. You, it doesn't matter if you come in and high-five the pastor on the way out, do flips down the aisle and say, man, that was the best word I've ever heard. If you don't go do anything with it, it really doesn't matter. You say, well, I, you, I need to see that in the scripture. Well, thanks for asking. Right here, James chapter 1, verse 22 says, but be doers of the word and not hearers only. Now, we quote that a lot, but we don't finish it. We'll say, don't this be a hearer of the word, be a doer. But look at what the rest of it says, deceiving yourself. The NIV version of the same says, don't merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves, do what it says. So in other words, it doesn't matter what I hear when I come in here. A lot of times we just come to church and we check off the box and we feel good about ourselves because we came in here. And like I said, he brings the word. I know him. I know he brings the word. But it doesn't matter how excited about it you get. And again, you can slap a high five to him on the way out and say, Pastor, that was awesome. But if you don't put it into practice in your life, you're deceived. I remember when God gave me a revelation of this, and he spoke this into my heart. He said, Ty, there's a lot of people in my church that are deceived thinking their relationship with me is better than it is. And I really tuned in there. He said, because they come to church, they get all excited about it, but they don't do anything with my word, and they're really deceived. I'm telling you, it woke me up. When I come into church... You might say, you know, a lot of times I'm I'm thinking, man, so-and-so needs to hear this. No, if I'm in the service, I need to hear it. If I'm in the service, God's got something for me. Because I don't know, and you don't know what you're going to face two weeks from now. And so he's giving you a word right now that is going to prepare you and solidify you and put you in a place of shelter so that no matter what comes, you're going to be ready. Oh, come on, say amen to that. We've got to get to a place where we hear the word, we receive that word, and then we go do that word. You need it in your notes every week. You need to say, what's my application? What am I going to put into practice this week? Because what that does is it puts you in a place of storm shelter. What did Jesus talk about in that parable? He talked about storms coming and how you're going to make it through the storm is hearing the word and doing the word. Very simple, very simple, because storms are going to come. What we do, how we handle those makes all the difference. Storms are going to come, but being a doer of the word is what gets us through the storms. Storms are going to come, but being a doer of the word is what gets you through the storms. Can I hear an amen? Amen. The disciples face storms. This is one we're going to go to Matthew chapter 14, and we're going to see a storm that they faced. Immediately, Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side while he sent the multitude away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he was on the mountain by himself. Say, by himself. himself. Guess who else by themselves? The disciples had the other disciples around, but they didn't have Jesus with them. He sent them away, and now he's on the mountain to pray. And what happens? A storm comes up. Let's pick this up. Verse 24 But the boat was now in the middle of the sea, tossed by the waves, for the wind was contrary. 
Now in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, said, it's a ghost. And they cried out of fear. But he said, but he immediately spoke to them saying, be of good cheer, it is I. Do not be afraid. You know what? This is how the enemy works a whole lot of times. Jesus sends ahead. He gives us the word. He sends us ahead. And a lot of times the enemy goes, okay, oh, now you're in trouble. You're all alone. How many has ever felt like you've been all alone in this walk? If your hand's not up, I will have an altar call at the end. Because I'm thinking we've all faced that. And the enemy wants to play on that. And he wants to say, uh, no one cares about you. No one's there for you. That church, they don't like you. So-and-so didn't even shake my hand today. You know what that means? They didn't shake your hand. That's all that means. They love you. They care for you. But the enemy tries to pick little, tiny, insignificant things and tries to separate you and make you feel like you're alone and you're not going to make it through. But what I love about this story is right in the middle of the storm, Jesus with swag starts walking out on that water. And he goes, guys, I'm with you. In fact, we have a promise. He says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And there's some of you that you felt like he's left you. You felt like Jesus has forsaken you. And I'm telling you, he's there with you. You may not know it, but he's there. And he is with you in the storm. He will not leave you. He is there with you. But the enemy wants you to hear the opposite. You're all alone. This way. God may have delivered you a hundred times before, but he's not going to this time. He's going to do it every time. Because he shows up in the storm. Point number two is simply this. Oh, my clicker lost. You might have to help me back there. He said, it, I, I go to Hebrews chapter 13 before we get to the point. There we go. Now we're going there. I got it. I think it came back alive. Hebrews 13, 5 says, that this is the amplified version. This is my wife's favorite version of the Bible. I, I call it the woman's version because there's a whole lot more words. But the last part of verse 5 of Hebrews 13 says, For he, God himself, it says, I will not in any way fail you, nor give you up, nor leave you without support. Now look at this. I love this. I will not, I will not, I will not in any degree leave you helpless, nor forsake you, nor let you down, nor relax my hold on you. Assuredly not. Oh, come on, shout hallelujah. He says, I am with you. I'm never going to leave you. I'm never going to fail you. Point number two, storm, point number one, storms are going to come. But point number two, he is with you in the storms. Come on, say amen to that. He is with us. Isaiah tells us that no weapon formed against us will ever prosper. Hey, do you notice that there are weapons that are going to be formed, but they're not going to prosper? Why? He's with me. He never leaves me. He never forsakes me. John chapter 10. I want you to see this. Again, the words of Jesus, verse 27 says, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I will give them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall they snatch them out of my hand. I'm telling you, he's talking about our eternal salvation here, but this is a promise that you need to stand on. I will never perish. I'm not afraid of death. Why? I'm going to take one last breath here, and the very next breath, I'm going to be present to the Father. There is no defeat as a believer. There is no death as a believer. You know, fear of death is the biggest fear there is out there. People say, well, I have a fear of flying. No, you don't. You have a fear of crashing on a mountain. You don't have a fear of heights. You have a fear of falling. Satan wants us to be afraid of death, but there is nothing. Why? Because no one's going to snatch me out of his hand. I'm not going to perish. So I'm in a constant place. Hey, it doesn't matter what happens. I'm storm sheltered. Come on, tap your neighbor and say storm sheltered. (laughs) Point number three. Oh, I had that up there again. Point number three. Speak to your storms. 
David a while ago, I told you, he said he had something to stay. We're getting ready to see a passage where Jesus spoke to the storm. You've got to speak to your storms. They're out there. They're coming. But he's with us. Now we speak to them. Mark chapter 4. Uh, last time I was here, I shared this story, but we're going to look at it from a different light today. Mark chapter 4, verse 35. On the same day, when evening had come, he said to them, let's cross over to the other side. Guess where they're going? They're going to the other side. Get this. They're not going halfway and dying in a shipwreck. You missed it. They're going to the other side. Some of you have gotten a word from God that everything that can go wrong looks like it's going wrong. But once you've got a word from God, you're going to the other side. I don't care what happens in the middle. When he spoke to me, I'm going to the other side. Come on, some of you have gotten a word from God, but everything in the middle is falling apart. And you want to check out here, but no, 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 no. We're not stopping in the middle. We're going to the other side other side verse 36 now when the multitude had uh, left he they took him along with he was in the boat and the other little boats were also with him and a great windstorm arose and the waves beat into the boat so that it was already filling waves were coming up and they're filling the boats and it looks like it's over and he says but the but he was there in the stern and i want you to see this he was asleep on the pillow Jesus was so worried about the storm, he was asleep. That's a picture some of you need to get a hold of. He was storm sheltered. He knew where he was going. The storm didn't phase him. He was asleep in the back of the boat. And they woke him and said, teacher, don't you care that we're perishing? Then he arose and he rebuked the wind. And I want to stop right there. It says he rebuked the wind. The disciples were fighting the waves. The waves were what was coming over the boat and about to sink the boat. They're fighting waves, but Jesus gets up and he speaks to the wind. He doesn't speak to the symptom, he speaks to the source. Some of you are fighting symptoms and you need to start speaking to the source. Your wife is not your problem. That guy just got nudged. (laughs) Your husband is not your problem. And a lot of times we're speaking to the person when we should be speaking to the spirit that's trying to come into the house. Jesus got up and he rebuked the wind. And then he said, peace be still. Jesus didn't let the storm conform him into who it was. He conformed the storm into who he was. He was in peace, so he made the storm be at peace. I I wished I I had this. I I filmed it on my phone, and I can't find it. But uh, there was a storm, a tornado that was coming from Oklahoma City to Tulsa. And you know how they do those storm trackers, and they tell you right where it's coming? Our house was right in the middle of where that, that tornado was coming. And sirens are going off. But my wife and I, we get out on the front yard. And we start pointing at that storm and we start speaking to that storm. And we command it to dissipate. And you know how they track the the radar tracks it? I, I videoed it on my phone. And it shows this storm and it comes right at our house and then it goes, whoop. And splits apart goes around our house then comes back together and goes on and it dissipates right after that and I'm not saying that to say I'm such a man of God or a woman of God no we did exactly what the word teaches us to do we got out and we spoke to the storm and that works for you just like it works for me but a lot of times we're afraid of the storms instead of speaking to the storms and I'm not just talking tornadoes I'm talking finances. I'm talking health. I'm talking every aspect of our life. Storms are going to come, but he's with us. But we have to speak to the storm. Let's wrap it up with this. Point number four, storms make you stronger. (laughs) The first first service, they kind of looked at me like like that was a Scooby moment. (laughs) 
Storms make you stronger? Yes. He lets them come, but they're to show us we have victory already. James chapter 1, verse 2 says this. You're going to have to help me again. It went to sleep on me, I think. James chapter 1, verse 2 says, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. Count it all what? Joy? That one messed me up for a lot of years. How many, that verse just rocked you for a while. Good, I'm glad I'm not the only one. I was like, Lord, I don't understand that. How can I count it joy when I fall into a a test, a trial? But I was trying to substitute the word joy. I was trying to substitute happy in for joy. Happy and joy are two different things. Happy solely based on our circumstances. As long as everything's going good, we're happy. But joy is either because our circumstances are good or it's a state of mind saying that even though they're not good, God's about to turn this around for, jo- for good. That's how the joy of the Lord becomes our strength. Because no matter what we face, I know God's about to turn this around. So he says, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. The New Living says, when troubles of any kind come your way, what do we do? We have a mindset, it doesn't matter. We are going to get through this. Because storms are going to come, but he's with us. And when we have something to say about it, now it's going to make us grow. Look at the rest of this. Verse 3. Knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. How many love patience? I need patience and I need it. Yeah, you all are the right congregation. We, we want it yesterday would have been better. No, patience is a fruit of the Spirit. In other words, that's something that we just normally do. We have a whole series on it on our table on patience. Because I'm telling you, when you learn this principle, nothing can affect you. Because it goes on to say, knowing that the testing of our faith produces patience, but let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect, which means mature and complete, lacking God wants you to get to a place that no matter what's happening around you, that you're not moved by it. You're not just visiting a shelter, you're storm sheltered. And it doesn't affect you. No matter what I see, no matter what I hear, no matter what I feel, I know God's for me, then who can be against me? Many of you are facing storms. A while ago, you raised your hands. But God says, I know this storm's real. And again, I'm not making light of this storm that you're going through, but he has a place for you where that storm won't affect you anymore. And some of you can't see it yet. But I'm not moving by what I see. I'm moving by the truth of his word. And I want you to just bow your heads and close your eyes today. Because a while ago, I saw a lot of hands that you're going through storms. But the first thing I want to address is you got to be in the family. All of the promises that we talked about today belong to us as believers. And maybe you're here today and you've never made Jesus your Lord. Or maybe you're like I was. I I was saved as a young boy, but I walked away from it. My whole high school, college, young adult age, I I walked away from it. I still loved him, still went to church, but he wasn't really Lord of my life. The word really, really wasn't working in my life. And with every head bowed and every eye closed, if you're here today and you've never made Jesus your Lord, or maybe you did like one time, but you walked away and you know you've got to come back. If I'm talking to you, With every head bowed, every eye closed, no one looking around, I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm not going to call you out by yourself. But if that's you, I want to pray for you. If that's you, raise your hand right where you're at. Yep, I see that hand. You can put it right back down. Yes, I see that one back there. You can put it right back down. Yes, I see that one too. Yes. Praise God. Four or five hands right there. Praise God. Some of you are going through storms financially. And it looks like it's about to fall apart. It looks like there's no way out. He says, I've got you in this. I'm with you. If I'm talking to you, I want you to raise your hand. Yeah. 
Lots of hands. Hands everywhere. Maybe you, you need help in your family, your marriage. There's a storm in that. You say, I'm right in the middle. And right now, I, I'm speaking to someone that even today you said, I don't know if I'm going to make it through this. If that's you, just raise your hand. Yeah, hand's already going up. Lots of hands. Maybe there's been a, a health challenge, a diagnosis, and you got a storm in there. If I'm talking to you, I want you to raise your hand. I'm going to pray and agree with you. Yeah, lots of hands on that. This is a big one right here. And if you will, please bow your heads and close your eyes because this one's very sensitive. But I hit on a point in the sermon that you feel alone, you feel rejected, you feel dejected, you feel almost like you're ready to just check out. And you know what I'm talking about. But the enemy's really tried to isolate you and said, you might as well just quit. If I'm talking to you, I want you to raise your hand. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Oh my, there's a bunch of hands. I want you to put them down. Out of those, there was one or two of you that, that have even thought suicide was the answer. Every head bowed, every eye closed, no one looking around. If that's you, I want you to raise your hand. Yep, there's hands already going up. Yeah. Four or five hands. You can put them right back down. Maybe there's a call on your life. But ever since you stepped in to try to do that call, it just everything seems to fall apart. If I'm talking to you, raise your hand. Man, it's almost all of us. I want you to stand to your feet. And I know we're a little bit over time, but hey, it's okay. If you raised your hand on any of those, or you know you should have raised your hand, I want you to take a bold step, and I want you to just step out of your seat. I want you to come to the front, and I want you to line up right here in the front. We're going to pray over you and pray with you. and say, well, Pastor, you said I wasn't embarrassed. Hey, there was about 50, 60, 70 hands, so you're not going to be alone. Just come to the front. No one's going to know what you're coming. I'm not going to ask you why you're coming. Just come and stand right here. Come on, come on. Give them a hand as they're coming. Come on, give it up for them. Here's where we're going to start. There's about five or six hands that that raised to to commit their life to Jesus or to come back. And I'm going to lead us in a prayer. And I want everyone in the whole room, those watching online, I want you to say this with me. Say, Jesus, I believe in you. I believe you're the son of God. That you came to earth to die for my sins. I believe you were buried in the grave. And that God raised you from the dead. And I receive you now as my savior and I make you now Lord of my life I belong to you now fill me with your spirit in Jesus name hallelujah come on if you prayed that prayer you are born again hallelujah now I want you to get this because Satan robbed me of this for life I should have known better but I didn't I'd come and I'd say a prayer like that, and if I didn't get goosebumps or something, I'd like, well, that didn't work. You know, if you didn't get goosebumps, you know what that means? You didn't get goosebumps. (laughs) We're not saved by feelings. We're saved by faith. If you prayed it and believed it, you're saved. And when the enemy goes, that didn't work, you just say, talk to my hand. It works. I'm the heaven bound. Now, I want to pray with you. Finances. If that's you, I want you to raise your hand. You need help in your finances. And even if you didn't come up and you need it, just raise your hand. Lord, I thank you that you supply all of our needs. Paul came to a place. He says, my God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So I speak right now. Finances come to them now. I like, Lord, I thank you that you're loosing settlements. You're loosing deals to be sold. And Lord, I thank you. Houses are being sold now. Lord, I thank you for it. Funds are being released now in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you that you are our supply. And Lord, we give you thanks and praise. Now, Lord, I pray in over families and marriages. Lord, I thank you that you heal and restore. And I pray for hearts that have been hurt. I pray healing and restoration. 
There's some of you that your marriage broke down to something I said in the middle. You've been fighting each other, but it's not a problem with the wife or a problem with the husband. It's a spirit of strife trying to come in your home. And you've got to command that spirit of strife to get out of your home. There'll be times, Debbie and I never fight, but every once in a while we'll have a, a disagreement or something. And one of us will come to the side and say, wait a minute, this isn't us. This is a spirit of strife. And when we touch in and we grab hands and we command that spirit to strive go, it goes. And then we don't even know what we were even arguing about. I'm speaking that over someone that that spirit of strife has been entered into your home and you've got to go home and clean house and get it out. Anyone that needs healing, I want you to raise your hand. You need healing in your body. Lord, I thank you just as we were reminded at communion time that by the stripes that you took on your back, we are healed. And I speak healing and wholeness and restoration right now in Jesus' name. From the top of their head to the soles of their feet, I loose the healing power of God. And I command these bodies to line up with the word of God that by the stripes of Jesus, they are healed. Now, body, line up and be healed in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you for it. Now, this is very sensitive. Lord, those that raise their hand that they feel alone, they feel rejected, and they've just thought about giving up. I speak over you. Don't quit. Don't give up. We need you. You have a vital part to play. You're not alone. He's with you. We're with you. You're in a church home that is a family, and they will wrap their arms around you, and they will walk through this storm with you. And I speak, don't you dare quit. Don't you dare give up. He is with you. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in this world. And I thank you for it right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, just lift your hands. Receive what he's got for you here. Lord, we thank you. That storms are going to come. You told us to be a good cheer because you've already overcome. We're not running to a shelter. We dwell and abide in a place of constant shelter. We're storm sheltered in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.